scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Pharaoh said, let's split your people. Some would go and some would remain. And Moses said, no way, that was not the command. Our wives will go, our husbands will go, our children will go. Sometimes the devil will allow the firstborn you can go, but all the rest you stay back. Or the husband you can go. Someone is going to make intercession. As for me and my house, open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray for your spouse, pray for your children. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mothers, pray. Mothers, pray. My son will not serve the devil. Mothers, pray. The spirits of addiction we come against you. Fathers pray. The spirits tearing down families. The spirits tearing down ministries. The spirit tearing down businesses. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for your children. Mention their names. Mention their names. Mention their names. Pray for your spouse. That addiction is broken. That manipulation is broken. Pray for pastors all over Canada. The spirit of discouragement causing the work to fail, causing the work of the kingdom to be limited. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We announce a new season over Canada. We announce a new season, a new season, a new season. We blow the trumpet in Zion. We sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. It's a new season over Canada. Go ahead and pray. As for me and my house, as for me and my ministry, as for me and my business, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel led in my spirit. We are still praying. We are going to pray for children from age 10 to 20. There is a plot by Satan to completely destroy that generation, age 10 to 20, that corporately as a generation, it seems that there is a spirit moving. They are rejecting Jesus corporately, but someone shout no way. A believer shout again, no way. Are you ready to pray? Pray for the children across Canada, ages 10 to to 20 we redeem them from the snare of the fowler in the name of Jesus Christ go ahead and pray go ahead and pray every manipulation the spirit of the age destroying them we come against that influence in the name of Jesus be it on healthy use of social media be it addictions of any and all sorts we come against it is a sound of revival Go ahead and pray. We pray for our children. They are escaped like the bird from the snare of the fowler. 
in the name of Jesus Christ as for me and my family we will serve the Lord 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 hallelujah hallelujah let me give you one more prayer are you tired of praying look up how many of you know that there is a spirit that incapacitates people economically i have seen a manifestation of that spirit over your land if you don't believe it allow your neighbor pray but we are going to be praying there are many dimensions to the subject of abundance and there is an implication you see the world as we know and our civilization advances economically whoever possesses the means the wherewithal has the opportunity to live a decent life to build a godly home and serve the purposes of the kingdom more effectively and there is an attack believe it or not over the finances of god's people i have seen this and and, and in all fairness it's not just for canada but since we are here now there are families right now who are in debt in trouble am i right on that perhaps there are preachers and churches in debt walking in integrity but in debt debt is a spirit yes it is the bible talks about a woman a wife of a prophet he was a prophet yet the man died only god knows why he died i suspect frustration i suspect depression even though a prophet and the bible says they came to take her two sons they represent her future they came to take the two sons and the woman ran to the prophet and he said what do you have in your house he said nothing except a little cruise of oil we are going to pray we reject a little cruise we reject a little cruise a little cruise cannot do much there has to be oil the bible says there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise listen i can tell you by the privilege of god's grace that if you are incapacitated financially it doesn't matter how visionary you are your vision will always assume the size of the resources you have great visions but limited by resources do you think you will serve god better if you serve god in your own home rather than running helter skelter trying to meet bills always behind it's a distraction this is not about money this is not about prosperity it's about a trap to distract your focus he said let my people go that they may go and serve me and pharaoh said it's because you are giving them straw stop giving them straw the time they take to seek the lord they will use it to find straw when laban jacob told laban release me and let me go laban said i have seen he consulted by divination Are we together we're going to pray i believe in the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god you're going to challenge the spirits that sit upon the minds sit upon the works of your hands misleading you into wrong decisions financially and then incapacitating people victimizing people using whatever guys institutional victimization or otherwise lift your voice and shout this say father come on canada say father in the name of jesus we decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that the spirits responsible for lack and want and poverty be destroyed now open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray the kingdom life brings with it dignity the kingdom life brings with it dignity and honor dignity and honor dignity and honor go ahead go ahead Canada pray 
Lift up your heads. The spirits of poverty, transgenerational poverty, the spirits of lack, the spirits of want, the spirits of servitude, we come against you. We come against you. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We declare liberation, economic liberation over the saints in Canada. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says the rich and the poor dwell together. It says God is the maker of them all. What a statement. The rich and the poor. He would have just said inhabitants dwell together. And yet the Bible says the rich and the poor dwell together. God is the maker of them all. He never says God is the maker of them so. Then the Bible says, the borrower, the borrower, the borrower, the borrower is slave to the lender. The borrower is the name of a person, is the state of an individual. Is a name available to be occupied. The borrower is slave to the lender. It says the rich rule it over the poor. The rich unbeliever rules over the poor Christian. And the borrower is slave to the lender. Whoever has the economic means will make the policies. Are we together? This is not a blind, visionless advocacy of carnality and finances but I can tell you if you reject the blessing of the Lord you will spend your life paying the price I have seen what financial um, lack and want can do to an individual a family a ministry it strips you of honor it strips you of dignity it is primarily responsible for the stress that many people go through Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly. Life in its entirety. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In this conference, your heart must be open to receive everything God has for you. Don't select some based on your mindset and reject any. If it comes from God, receive it. If he sends you favor, receive it. If he sends you fire, receive it. If he opens the door, walk in it. Are we together now? Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good to see everyone again. Let's bless the name of the Lord for God's servant, Pastor Nathaniel Bassey. Such an awesome time just driving us deeper into this river of revival. Now you'll be sensitive because God is already doing many things in our lives and um, you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes after this conference. I can assure you that it is no mere conference. It is a God-ordained conference as an instrument that sets this nation on fire for Jesus. May that be your testimony. Again, please allow me honor all the men, women of God who we'll take out time to individually and specifically honor them, particularly those who labor in word and doctrine over the nation of Canada. I know that um, salutations came earlier on, but please allow me, this is a house of honor. And um, let me just take a minute to do that. So please let me request, if you are a man, a woman of God functioning uh, within the fivefold ministry, you are here represented. I know there are many here. Please 
may I politely request that you stand for honor and recognition. Let's honor them. Canada, learn honor. Learn to honor priesthood. God bless you. Is this the best you can do? Is this how you honor your spiritual leaders? Amen. Amen. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, mas. The Lord bless you. We truly honor you. Thank you for your presence. Are you ready for the word? Amen. So we've been considering a series titled Lampstands. And yesterday, part one, we looked at God's end time agenda. And I told you, just a quick recap, that God has an agenda for individuals. He has a prophetic program for families, for nations, and for a dispensation. And then we considered the fact that there are three components to God's prophetic end time program. Still remember? Number one, we said world evangelization. That is a program that was tailor-made by God to affect and influence the world of sinners, the unbelieving world. World evangelization is God's program to reach the lost. Number two, we said the second component as far as God's end time program is concerned is the maturity and the growth of the saints. This is a program that is unique to his church, the body of believers. So we have a program for the unbelieving world, world evangelization, that all men be saved, and then there is a program for believers. Hallelujah. And we did say that believers become mature through a sound communication of doctrine alongside the principles of the kingdom. And number three, we said the third component that is captured in God's prophetic program is called territorial transformation. That God's program has a component that speaks to society. Now, unfortunately, um, before now, most people do not take seriously this third component. And so we have missionaries who focus on world evangelization. We have pastors, teachers, apostles who focus on mentoring and building the body. But very few people are apostolic in their understanding of the kingdom. And so usually the society is left without an imprint of God's power, God's grace. Are we together? How many of you know that you can be saved as a person? But if you live within a territory that is godless, you are still in trouble. Ask the man Lot. Lot was a good man, but Sodom and Gomorrah was not a good place, and he paid the price for it. He was about to lose his daughters, not because of unrighteousness. Are we together? Isaiah said, I am a man undone, a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amidst a people of unclean lips. Territories can be under siege like Sodom and Gomorrah, like Nineveh, like Babylon. And whole territories can experience salvation. In fact, I have a series on that you may want to listen to, Commanding Salvation Over Territories. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to know that this third dimension, not many people understand the dynamics of territorial transformation. And I'll be wrapping up this series as I teach you that hopefully by the evening whilst we pray. But just to remind you again that God has a threefold end time mandate. Never forget this. World evangelization, the maturity of the saints, and then territorial transformation. I did tell us yesterday that God's strategy, if you recall, God's strategy for achieving this threefold mandate are men. Please do not forget this. God's strategy says, I will build my church. The church are not just stones, they are men. I sought for a man. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. It says, who shall we send and who shall go for us? Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. Send me. Send me. Psalm 89 and verse 20, 21. It says, I have found David, my servant. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. I have found David, my servant. When God finds men, he rejoices and he makes it clear that he has found a man. Hallelujah. May God find you. 
May God find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember when he came to man at the cool of the garden, he said, Adam, where are you? He was not just asking for location. Where are you? Something has happened to you. You are no longer available to birth my purposes. And he began to give flimsy excuses. Where are you? He said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Hallelujah. So God's strategy for accomplishing his threefold agenda are men. Now, please listen. I told us yesterday, and I wanted to get this very importantly, that not every man can be used to birth God's program on earth. Unfortunately, statistically, I hope I'm still right, we're a little above 8 billion people right now upon the earth. Can you imagine that? 8 billion people and counting. And you will think with this vast army, God should not be in want of men. Unfortunately, there, are, there is a specific kind of man God is looking for. Not every kind of man can be used to birth God's program. And recall yesterday I taught you that according to Scripture, there are three kinds of men. The Bible talks about the natural man, 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural man, unregenerate, unsaved, a sinner, the natural man. Then the Bible talks about the carnal man, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3, the carnal man, one who is carnally minded, the carnal man, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 3, the carnal man. Brethren, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. That is another name for a carnal man, a babe, an infant, even though in Christ. You are still sensual, ruled by the impulses of your senses. You have not submitted to the governing authority of Scripture. You have not submitted to the leadership of the Spirit. You are also void of spiritual understanding. Such a person is called carnal. Still under the influences of the flesh. And then the third kind of man, according to Scripture, is the spiritual man. 1 Corinthians 2.15. The Bible talks about such a man as spiritual. A spiritual man. A spiritual man. Hallelujah. It says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans chapter 8. So the Bible tells us, and I, I did, uh, um, you know, give you an illustration. And I did that also in America. Remember yesterday that the journey to transformation starts from the unsaved person. And then you become saved, even though an infant. And through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the word and the ministry of the teaching priest. Do not forget this. These tripartite spiritual forces are responsible for affording you the opportunity to transit from a carnal believer, from an infant, until you become transformed. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the word, and the ministry of the teaching priest. And then you attain a point of maturity and transformation. You are now led to the third stage called empowerment. You are empowered. I did tell us that the value of empowerment is that it comes upon a transformed man, a transformed mind. The moment you are empowered, your status changes in the spirit. You are no longer called a believer alone. You are called a witness. You now become the kind of person who can birth God's program. So the assignment is not just to be and remain believers. It starts from being an unbeliever, then a believer, but a believer is on his way to be used by God but cannot be used in that state until he transits to become a witness. And the journey is transformation, empowerment, and then you are deployed to serve the purposes of the kingdom. If you understand me so far, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so we're looking at part two very quickly this morning. And I'm going to be teaching you 
in this session how to light the fire. We're teaching lampstands. I want to show you the dynamics, how a believer attains stature in the spirit. Since we have agreed that your transformation matters as far as your being used is concerned, I want to show you the dynamics of transformation, how a believer transits in the spirit until you become a person of power and a person of grace. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? Trusting the Lord for illumination. Go ahead. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Are you praying? Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Open my eyes, O oh God. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts 4, 13. Once upon a time, this group of men were weak, ill-informed, spiritually bankrupt individuals. So Jesus is with these disciples and he called them to follow him. The Bible says he called them to be with him and that he might send them. Fast forward to Acts chapter 4. Look what they had become. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Why? And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This was the secret to their transformation. They were once unlearned men. They were once ignorant men. The people knew them. What created the transition? They had now become powerful men, bold, articulate, full of power, giving evidence to spiritual things. Acts chapter 4 now go to verse 33. The Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness, 33, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Because they had been with Jesus, knowledge came. Because they had been with Jesus, boldness came. Because they had been with Jesus, grace came. They had been with Jesus, great power. There is an implication to being with Jesus. When he says, follow me, something happens to you as you follow. You see, when God calls a man, he does not give you an assignment yet. When he calls you, he calls you to himself. Then he makes you, then he sends you to the nations. Let me take that again. When God calls a man, don't think assignment yet, think transformation. Many people come to Jesus and they do not allow themselves to become. They are conscious of the assignment. And so they live ill-prepared and they stand before Pharaoh without encountering the burning bush. When God calls a man, he does not call you to an assignment. He calls you to himself. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. I'm sending you to the nations, but the first part of call is to follow me. Many have come to Jesus, but they are not looking on to Jesus. They are looking on to their mission. They are looking on to their assignment. And you would think because it's a spiritual thing, it means that's a pattern. The pattern has always been to follow him. He makes you, anoints you, then sends you. You come to Jesus. He makes you. He anoints you. Then he sends you. You don't come to Jesus to receive a mandate and then run away. Most believers make this mistake. They do not know that they need to stay to become. So they are mandate conscious, not presence conscious. They want an assignment. They want an anointing. They don't need Jesus for transformation. They just need him to attest upon their lives, their ministries. No wonder we stand before the nations and there is no evidence of knowing him. The Bible says because they had been with Jesus, not because they received a mandate. They marveled because they had been with Jesus. Are we learning? 
Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, there is an exact defined spiritual pathway that leads to maturity and stature in the spirit. Please lend me your attention. Something is about to change in your life now. I want to show you an ancient path, the path that those who serve God's purposes effectively followed. When it has to do with being made in the spirit, you are not given the liberty to invent your strategy. There is a predefined strategy. Your assignment is to be led through that path by the spirit. And if and when you allow yourself to be led through that path, the end of it is glory. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Please look at me. In every generation, there seem to be certain individuals, not many, individuals who carry unusual dimensions of the anointing unusual investments of the spirit of revelation just functioning in unusual dimensions i can tell you this that disparity is not necessarily god's predeterminate counsel it is because most believers have not been mentored to understand the pathway that leads to authentic power the pathway that leads to grace we have a lot of colleges in Canada, I believe, and I'll always give this example. Say, for instance, if we have a gentleman here who intends to become a doctor, talk to me, intelligent people. What is your recommendation to this gentleman on his journey or ambition to becoming a doctor? He cannot freelance knowledge and become a doctor. He cannot select what he wants. There is an exact body of knowledge that translates that individual to be called a doctor. Am I right on that? So you can see a once naive, confused individual with only an ambition to be a doctor. Fast forward 10, 20 years, that same gentleman can be called a professor of surgery, medicine, even a consultant. What changed? Not his size, not his voice. He passed through a methodical system that has been accredited. You see why believers do not change? Why believers do not evolve? Because we largely freelance our understanding about God and we are not guided. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Just because you have truth does not mean it will bless you. No, you can have the ingredients to prepare a meal and still not get it right. It takes skill. You need to know the combination. Are we together? Yeah. So many believers want to grow. Many believers want to access genuine apostolic power. Many believers want to experience the favor of God. Many believers want their lives to count. But for the most part, we have not learned that there is a pattern. There is a pathway in the spirit. By the way, I should tell you that God is a God of patterns. Please say that after me. God is a God of patterns. One more time. God is a God of patterns. When Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, God began to give him specific instructions to ensure that the tabernacle were built according to the pattern shown him. Hallelujah. And the glory of God would not show up until Moses insisted and built according to the pattern. So if a believer is to be built to become an individual of stature and power in the spirit, doing much for the kingdom, it's important for us to understand the spiritual dynamics that lead to maturity. And please walk with me as I open your eyes by the spirit to the real secret of maturity I say this with all humility I do not know everything I'm a student in the spirit myself learning every day but there are some things by the privilege of God's grace we have been shown by mercy we are called stewards of the mysteries 
Paul said, you know of the dispensation of grace that was given to me. Are we together? Yes. He articulated his apostleship in Ephesians chapter 3. How that he made known this mystery unto me. And the mystery was given to him to the end that all men will see. Verse 9, Ephesians 3 and verse 9. The grace that was given to him to first understand the mysteries of the kingdom and then to make all men see. There is a grace that does not just teach you this truth, but it empowers you to make all men see. Number one, the first secret, the first pathway, the first spiritual requirement for any individual to become a person of growth, stature, maturity, and power, and please lend me your attention, is that you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. Submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. A systemic structure of prayer. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. Prayer. The Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men, 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 men ought always to pray and not to faint. Show me an individual now saved and is guided by proper mentorship to habitually, habitually, systemically submit yourself to prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, when you read verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Say that after me. The hour of prayer. There was a ritual that was connected to their prayer life. The hour of prayer. It was not just prayer when they remembered to pray. Are we together? What gives value to your prayer life is the discipline of consistency. What gives value to your prayer life is the discipline of consistency. Write that down. The discipline of consistency. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication, but you obtain that enabling grace and you engage it through discipline. You can pray yourself to a more superior version. You can pray yourself to a more powerful version. You can pray yourself to a more enlightened version. Jesus prayed. The apostles prayed. The early church prayed, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer, Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves continually. Canada, hear me. You are as powerful as your prayer life. You are as powerful, not pretentious religious prayer, prayer that produces power in the spirit. You are as powerful as your prayer life. Parents, teach your children to pray, not by compulsion. Teach them by leading the way in prayer. Don't tell people to pray and then step back. You see, there is a grace that follows a prayerful believer. That grace is perceivable even by an unbeliever. You can perceive a healthy prayer life. Hallelujah. You must obtain grace to pray. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is an, uh, is an attack on God's purposes as committed to you. Someone shout, I will pray. Let the devil hear you say, I will pray. Jesus mandated that the disciples pray. He prayed himself. Can you imagine? As the son of God, he still prayed. You must obtain grace to pray. 
We're not doing an elaborate discussion on prayer. I've done several teachings on prayer. Please go to Koinonia Global and get the teachings I have taught on effective prayer dynamics. There's been series and series on prayer. Teach us to pray. It's a series you would want to listen to. The disciples came and met Jesus and said, teach us to pray. Their issue was not prayerlessness. It was inefficiency in prayer. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus began to teach them to pray. Hallelujah. A man can be taught to pray. You don't just learn how to pray by praying alone. You are taught. You can pray amiss by praying. But you pray effectively when you are mentored to pray. You are taught to pray. Effective prayer. But let me say this about prayer. James was talking about prayer and he said, The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous. Still have that in your Bible? Availed much. You know what that meant? He was trying to teach us that prayer has to be fervent and has to be effectual to produce power. Now, fervent meant that your heart would have to be involved. Are we together? Your heart, your emotions must be involved in your prayer. You cannot be praying seriously while making a call, browsing, praying one minute and then checking who is liking my page, who is liking my post. Uh, that is careless prayer that does not produce power. If your prayer does not touch you, it will not touch heaven. Are we together? You must set yourself to pray. Set yourself to pray. Give it dedicated attention. Number two, he says prayer must be effectual. What makes prayer effectual is the degree to which the will of God is captured in your prayer. Please listen. What makes prayer effectual is not the quality, the linguistic prowess. How articulate you can speak so well yet amiss. What makes prayer effectual is the degree to which the will of God is captured in that prayer. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And the will of God is captured in his word. Are we together? Word-based, scripture-compliant prayer is effectual prayer. A lot of believers pray emotional prayers full of sentiment and error. And just because you say amen at the end of the prayer does not mean you prayed. What makes your prayer powerful is that, number one, your heart has to be involved and number two, you must pray according to the will of God. The will of God is captured in his word. But you see, pragmatically speaking, there are times where you may have unique events in your life and you may not directly have a scripture as at yet. For instance, it's not written in the Bible whether you should be in Calgary or you should be in Toronto or you should be in Canada or leave Canada. You may not find that in scripture. This is where the prayer language of the Spirit comes. When you pray in the Spirit, you don't stop till the will of God becomes clear. Praying in the Spirit is not just for edification. It's a system that transports the will of God from the heart of the Father until it gets to your consciousness. Is someone learning now? But when it gets to your consciousness, now you begin to engage by the Word. Mark 11, 23, 24. What things soever ye desire, the Bible says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Thou shalt have them. There are many assignments to prayer. I'm tempted to just stretch a bit. But let me pick one. The major assignment of prayer is for your edification. Please listen. For most believers, our prayer is just full of prayer requests, needs. So we say something like, Father, thank you. I'm here again. And then we read out the lists. My mortgage, my health. And th there's nothing wrong with that. But the primary assignment of prayer is as a tool for your growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. 
and as he prayed the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering you pray for growth you pray for transformation a matured believer gets to a point where you shelve your prayer requests and get into the place of prayer because like you may have heard me say many of the things you write as requests are growth dependent many of the things you expect God to answer are growth dependent an heir for as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave there are things that God by his mercy will never give you as answer to prayer because you do not have the capacity to have it did you know that in the place of growth you will find out that many requests naturally gravitate towards you most believers are asking for what they do not have capacity to receive father give me 10 million Canadian dollars your word says whatever I ask you are right but God knows that he will lose you when that happens not because you are a bad person you have not been cultured to even understand the purpose of the blessings so he will rather you grow as you grow you will find the answers following you per growth per level are we together yes Lord, I'm trusting you for an anointing. Give me a double portion of Renard Bonke's anointing. Then add T.L. Osborne's and then add everyone. So at least you list five or six generals and ask for double portions of the anointing. Can you stand the attack that comes with that anointing? Because if you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming after you. There are attacks that don't follow men. They follow mantles. So whatever mantle you carry, you must be equipped to survive the attack that comes. You don't just blindly pray. And, and you know sometimes, quite honestly, sometimes people just kneel down and say, Apostle, I know you are still alive, but I want a double portion of your anointing. And I can lay my hands on them and between me and God, I know nothing really, just so that they, they can go rejoicing. But it doesn't work like that, my dear people. There are rules of engagement. Are we learning? Yeah. Growth. So submit yourself to pray from today. Make it a culture. Let me challenge every family here. Create a prayer system within your house. Let every visitor come to your home finding a prayer system. Else they will bring their gods to your home. Are we together? If you come to my house, you have to pray like I pray. If you're not interested, stay somewhere. But if you, you are under my care, even if it's for a day, you have to subscribe to the modus operandi that governs my house. As for me and my house, wake up and pray. Conquer slumber. Wake up and pray. Love your destiny enough to wake up and pray. Shake up sleep and slumber. You wake up in the night, Lord, I give you praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Canada, you hear my voice. You see, let me tell you this. The realm of the spirit has a record system, and you believe me, I'm not exaggerating. If there is no track record of your burning the incense of prayer, you can't stand before principalities and say, give way. It will be an unfamiliar voice. Jesus, I know, they will tell you. Paul, I know, but who are you? There is no track record in the spirit. There is no sowing to the spirit. Why do you want a harvest? It's fraud to want a harvest when there's no seed sown. Pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Men of God, pray. Mothers, pray. Do you know if we spend half the time we use complaining, gossiping, grumbling, and telling people things about our lives who do not have the power to create any change, you go to God in prayer. Stretch there until a birthing happens. Stretch there until a birthing happens. Father, you have given me this ministry. You have given me this vision in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because the wisdom for this vision comes 
in the name of Jesus and you pray every day. One day becomes one week, becomes one month, becomes years. It becomes a habit until you begin to reap the harvest from an effective prayer life. Let me pray for someone. Every attack on your prayer life, every attack on your prayer life, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that spirit that has which haunted your prayer life, that has drained out of your life the desire to pray and to pray consistently. Here at this conference, I declare a revival. I declare a revival, a reignition to your prayer fire, a reignition to your prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As ministers of the gospel, we are given the mandate to pray and intercede for those who are under our care. But we must train those under our care to learn to stand strong and pray. The more people learn to pray, the more they will give pastors rest. There are, there are many pastors who cannot sleep because members sometimes, with all due respect, get very lazy and they just transfer by way of text a long list of prayer requests while they sleep. No. Believers must be taught to be responsible. Are we together? The more we teach believers, we take away the tendencies for, for being idolized. Let the people learn how to encounter Jesus. We will be there helping, but they should learn his presence. They should learn to pray. If you say, Apostle, pray for me, I will pray for you. But you will be praying while I pray for you. You have nothing to lose praying while I pray for you. Are we together? Teach your children to pray. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that a time will never come in Canada where prayer becomes, um, where laws will be passed that hinder prayer. Shout amen, oh. In the name of Jesus Christ. We love your government and we come in peace, but we also come establishing the purposes of God. There should never be a generation in Canada that fights prayer. When you fight prayer, you have fought the, the potential for creating changes. In the name of Jesus Christ. So prayer is the first secret that helps men to transition to become people of power. I can tell you sincerely, I do not know anyone who has submitted himself to the prayer ministry, genuinely, non-pretentiously, are we together? Who has not attained maturity and power in the spirit? Among the many things that prayer does is to sharpen your discernment. Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, and you find rest for your soul. Apostle, I'm a businessman. Do I need prayer? Surprisingly, even more than a preacher. Do you know why? Because if a preacher preaches a bad sermon, he forgives himself and is ready next week. But when you lose a million dollars because of carelessness, you will get it back, but it will not be that easy. The preacher has a chance to get back again, revisit his notes. He can even get back to the congregation and say, sorry, I gave you a wrong scripture, you correct it. But that is not easily done as a businessman. When you lose, you can lose an opportunity that will take five years to return back. You need more discernment. Are we together? Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. An opportunity was here and I did not discern. A great door and an effectual was opened, but I was blind. Did not know that it was a, a safe passage into a new season. One more time, shout, I will pray. I will pray. So prayer, effective prayer is the first strategy. Ready for number two? The second strategy that is responsible for maturity and stature in the spirit is that you must submit to the ministry of the word. As simple as this sounds, just lend me your attention for explanation. The ministry of the word. You must submit to the ministry of the word. 
Write this down. Spiritual maturity is knowledge dependent. Spiritual maturity, attaining spiritual maturity at any level is knowledge dependent. I shared a scripture yesterday. Let's go back to that scripture. Acts 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. Able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Maturity is knowledge dependent. Dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge. If you lack sufficient knowledge, and when I talk about knowledge, I mean high-level spiritual illumination. High-level spiritual illumination. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 is a scripture that has challenged me for years. It still does. Read it with me, please. One, two, go. Oh, come on, Canada. Let's try again. One, two, go. Uh-huh. As he ought to know. As he ought to know. There is a standard. Non-negotiable spiritual standard. The authority and dominion that you command and exert upon the cosmos depends on the level of illumination that you have. Please look at me. What do you know about prayer? What do you know or not know about Satan? What do you know about favor? What do you know about growth? What do you know about restoration? What do you know about relationships? What do you know about building things that last? What do you know about spiritual warfare? What do you know about the ministry of angels? What do you know about the Holy Spirit? What do you know about God? What do you know about yourself? These are the bodies of truth that you stand upon to gain command in life and destiny. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that most believers are in ignorance. They know a little about prayer. They've heard something, one or two about angels. They know something about confessing the word. They hope it works. They know something about giving. They are not exactly sure of it. They know something about fasting. They fast occasionally, grudgingly so. They know something about relationships. And so we have, we have very scattered knowledge that is not coordinated to produce victory. Your knowledge must be methodical. Your illumination must be high enough. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. If I ask an individual now, anybody at all, to put on your phone light. Do you know that the light that comes from your phone is light, but not light enough to illuminate this beautiful auditorium? So it is light, but it is not light enough. If all of us were to depend on that light alone, we'd be in trouble. This is how many believers run their lives. They have little light. Little light. And with it, they dare the devil. And they make all kinds of audacious statements and spend the remaining part of their life paying the price. Dominion is knowledge dependent. Victory is knowledge dependent. Authority in the kingdom, the administration of it is knowledge dependent. I want to show you something now that I pray would bless you. There are six fundamental spiritual truths that every believer must know. If you do not know this, you cannot rise to your prophetic destiny and you will not amount to much as far as being a witness is concerned. Six of them. I want to give it to you. Be at liberty to teach your members, dear pastors. Be at liberty to share this in your prayer groups. Six fundamental bodies of spiritual truth that any believer who wants to attain unto maturity 
any believer who wants to command power in the spirit and command power within the cosmos, you cannot be in ignorance of these six dimensions of truth and excel. Are you ready to write? Pray in the spirit for one minute. Thank you, Jesus. Sani palasho brandi kapara supriyast. Oh, your season has come. Oh, your season has come. Oh. My hell has come. Oh, hallelujah. This truth you are about to hear came as a result of my own personal study. I've been on a project of putting truths together as a contribution to the body of Christ, taking away the haziness around the subject of spiritual growth. Because for as long as our strategies become methodical, we will have more believers attain unto maturity. Are we together? So that we do not just have topics scattered and then the believers are at liberty to choose whatever they want. And so, um, I've been able to put together by the Spirit of God six fundamental bodies of truth no believer will rise and be a witness, be a lampstand, be a light without the knowledge of this. Write them down. Number one, the first foundational truth you must have to command dominion to be a mature believer with stature is that you must know God and Jesus Christ, his son. Write that down. The first foundational body of truth you must have is the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ his son John 17 and verse 3 this is life eternal the Bible says that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent in all your knowings if you do not know God you will not amount to much Daniel 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people not everyone, but the people that do know their God. It says they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not write on exploits. Do exploits. The God you encounter is the God you reveal to your world. The God you encounter is the God you reveal to your world. If you encounter a supposedly weak, confused, disoriented God, you will sell that confusion to your world and misrepresent God while you do that. The quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter. Let me say that again. The quality of your witness as a believer, the quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter one last time the quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter but I know whom I am believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day you must know God and you must know Jesus Christ his son because life situations and circumstances will ask you who sent you? Who sent you? We have come here in the name of the Lord. And please make no mistakes about it. As we're planning this conference, Satan was also planning. It would be a joke to believe that he, being aware that thousands of people will be gathered here to be healed, saved, and delivered, and then he would fold his hands. But thanks be to God, who causes us always to triumph. When the believers stand victorious, it is not because Satan was not aware of their presence. It's because the light can shine in the midst of darkness. Are we together now? The awareness of God kills fear. When you know who sent you, fear dies. 
take time to know God before you start the assignment he gives you. Take time to know God. I overcame. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Listen, believers, you want to become an overcomer as a preacher? Any land is harsh and will remain harsh depending on who backs you. Canada can be a nightmare with all due respect to anyone and everyone except that when you become, when God holds you, when God backs you, you can run through a troop. You can leap over a wall. Do you? Listen, there is no land that is welcoming by default. There are demons in every land, demons in every nation, principalities. There are enemies of the cross everywhere. It is your knowledge of God and the confidence derived from that knowledge that defines your reality. Are we together? You must know God. Pay the price to know God. Please get my teaching knowing God accurately. I have done a teaching on that. I'm not going to go into it. But God, as great and mighty as he is, he wants to be known. And he's already defined a pathway to knowing him. Make reference to that teaching, knowing God accurately. Number two, the second fundamental body of truth you must know as a believer is that you must know yourself who you are in Christ this may sound basic and elementary but you will be surprised how you'll be pegged in life and destiny if you do not know yourself in light of who Christ is second fundamental knowledge that brings victory command dominion that helps you to be an effective witness you must know who you are in Christ you must know who you are in Christ. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, I believe, it says we are a chosen generation. I like this. Chosen. A royal priesthood. He's describing Joshua Selman. A holy nation. A peculiar people with a mandate to show forth the praises. Is the word doxazo. To show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light it's important to know who you are in light of who christ is you already know where you came from and all the nasty stories that follow your background but do you know where you are now part of that you are part of a new family and it's important you are aware of your new identity in christ hallelujah it's true that the Bible says, I am a joint heir, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Christ. He is the vine, but I am the branch. Inseparable. His victory is my victory. I may not be all good by myself, having the energy to produce results, but not when I am joined with him. The Bible says we've been raised up with Christ. We've been made to sit together. Someone say together. I can fail alone, guarantee. But me and Jesus cannot fail together. No. We are a combo that does not fail. Do you believe this? The Bible says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Your identity in Christ. The Bible calls you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you've been given the mandate. You, you are God's choicest creation exalted above every other creation you are called man it's not an insult it's a description of a kind of spirit the only spirit that has authorization to command dominion upon the earth is called man hallelujah exalted anointed that my body can host the holy spirit my god when you are looking for where he is, find me. Find me. When you're looking for where his wisdom resides, I look for you. You're looking for where his favor speaks. 
You see that now? It's important. Listen, the knowledge of your identity in Christ brings healing. It can bring healing to your past. It can bring healing to whatever it is. Maybe perhaps you came from a family where no one has amounted to anything. Now, when you come into Christ, it's going to take a while, but you have to allow the word of God to culture yourself. There are things I can never believe about myself. No. No. Many of you have heard me say this humorously. If God is to bless 10 people here, I'll start praying for the remaining nine people because one space is already gone. His jealousy defends me that much. His, his love has done something to me. I am God's investment. Think about it for one moment. I am God's investment. Hmm. He's invested his life, his jealousy, his attention. Whatever troubles me, God cannot ignore. He will come and find out what is making my son cry. I don't know how you do your business between you and him, but this is, I'm, I'm telling you what happens between me and God. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. God can reprove a nation for the person he loves. If you think love is not that powerful, ask Ahasuerus why her man died. Her man was his friend but not after offending Esther. Are we together? This is how much he loves me. You must carry this mentality. Believers, hear me. Carry this mentality. Canada, listen to me. You are not weak. You only call yourself weak. If he calls you strong, call yourself strong. If he calls you victorious, let the redeemed of the Lord, help me, say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the victorious of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me, mortal man, awesome God, mortal man. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry his presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Is it in your Bible that a thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right side, that none shall hurt you with your eyes, shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked? It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? hallelujah this is who you are you are a light he calls you salt he calls you light don't call yourself darkness change your perception about yourself it doesn't matter how you feel stay on what he's called you meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them the bible says that you're profiting when god sends me by my strength i am not able but with jesus i can run through a troop i can leap over a wall listen when you believe this you will do big things for god in canada no excuses Ordinary men, empowered by a mighty God. Ordinary men, drawn to the realm of dominion by their partnership with a mighty God. So you look ordinary and you remain ordinary, but your results will only be Godlike. Godlike and extraordinary. Predictable dominion, repeatable again and again. Because the one who stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one, 
he is consistent full of integrity and power listen the bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear there is a formation happening but listen don't call yourself what god has not called you and this is not just some pentecostal garbage no 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 it is how the economy of heaven runs let the redeemed of the lord say so look at yourself in the mirror when you get back home and say in the name of jesus i am blessed gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things preachers my tongue is a pen of a ready writer when i write i write and rewrite i write and rewrite i write and rewrite over destinies i write and rewrite hallelujah don't call yourself ordinary no you are not you feel ordinary but there is an ability he says, I can do all things, Philippians 4.13, through Christ. Through Christ. It would have been an arrogant statement, except that you've introduced Christ. Through Christ. I can build that business through Christ. I can buy that house by December through Christ. If you do not believe in yourself, in light of who Christ is the nations will not believe you their confidence comes as an overflow of your confidence in yourself in light of who Christ is don't go and hang yourself you are too valuable don't commit suicide no you are bringing minus one to God's army and run away from naysayers who have mastered the art of frustrating your journey to manifestation. They see you and, ah, you mean you are in church? You love them with the love of Jesus and get away from them. They are not healthy for your growth. Did you hear me? Love them with the love of Jesus and get away from them. Get away from wrong social media content that deflates after praying and studying the Bible, you sit down and hear one nasty story and at the end of it, you don't feel powerful again. No. There is nothing God tells me to do that I cannot do in Christ. My confidence is not in my ability. Our sufficiency, the Bible declares, is not in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. Say, I am well able. Let that be your last declaration for now. Say, I am well able. I am well able to preach. I am well able to do business. I am well able to raise my kids. I may be a single mom, but in the name of Jesus, I am well able. I may be a young man, an orphan. In the name of Jesus, I am well able. I am well able. By you, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Please be seated. Fundamental truth number three. Number one, you must have the knowledge of God and Jesus' his son. Number two, you must know who you are in light of who Christ is. Are you ready for number three? Number three, you must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program. You must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program. Hebrews 10 and 7. I come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, O oh God. I come in the volume of the book. It was written about me to do your will, O oh God. I will do your will, do your will, do your will, O oh God. I will do your will, do your will, do your will. 
come. Someone, you need to tell Canada this. Lo, I come. Don't ignore my presence. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is already written of me to do your will. Listen to me. You are not just a number you count. You are part of God's prophetic program. Are we together? Act as if the program of God depends on you because it does. Your contribution is part of the build-up for this great army. Don't admire others at the detriment of your own call. There is a unique place for you in God's program. It doesn't matter how many pastors are in Canada. If God called you, there is a place for you. It doesn't matter how many business people are in Canada. If God called you, there is a place for you. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter how many psalmists, how many prophetic worshippers. If God has called you, there is a place for you. Here's what Philemon 1 and verse 6 says. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. There are things God has given you. That voice is not for waste. The wisdom is not for waste. Something happens to you when you know that you count as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. Shout it one last time, but do so with confidence. Say, I count. One more time, say, I count. Yes, sir. This conference has happened not just because of the presence of Jesus, not just because of Joshua Selman, not because of Pastor Nathaniel Bassi alone. This conference has happened because of you. One more time, say I count. Don't let no devil lie to you. They call you a black sheep. Call yourself a, well, what do you call yourself now? Because a white sheep can still fail. Call yourself a sheep that is led. I think that's the one that wins. Whether black or white, the one that is led is the one that finds... <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the reason why as God empowers us to travel across the nations... When I meet pastors like the great leaders over Canada here, I am always in a hurry to appreciate them, to salute them, and to let them know that we have only come to lift up the hands of those who are already here. The reason why you are gathered today is because there are others who have labored before we came. Always know that you count. You are here because some prayer warrior somewhere prayed you out of some addiction it is true that you heard joshua selman's message but i was not there listen to my message rise up and walk i teach there that several miracles happened the miracle we know is the miracle of rising up to walk but there were many other miracles the first miracle was that the man found destiny helpers who could carry him daily 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 don't forget the ones who carried him. If they did not carry him, he would not meet Peter and John. And then the miracle of allowing himself to be carried. You see that? So whilst you appreciate Joshua Selman, while you appreciate all of the people who have made this happen, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, make sure you are fair enough to say thank God for me thank God for me when history is written over the sound of revival amazing that your name will be added as those who responded to that clarion call listen to me I want you to stand confident in the fact that you have a role to play in God's prophetic program are you ready for number four let's hurry up we have to pray foundational truth Number four, who is learning already? The knowledge of God, the knowledge of yourself in light of who Christ is, your place in destiny and God's prophetic program. Are you ready for number four? The fourth foundational truth you must know is that you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. 
you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom if you do not contend to know the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom you cannot walk in the reality of dominion you trade mysteries for dominion you trade mysteries for dominion you exchange mysteries the currency that purchases dominion are currencies of mysteries you trade mysteries to buy dominion Job 38 and verse 33. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? He says, canst thou establish the dominion thereof on the earth? Do you know the mysteries by which the heavens regulate itself? I wish we could find NIV or NLT. It says, do you know the laws of the heavens? And can you establish that dominion using those laws upon the earth? Thank you. Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you use those laws to set up God's dominion system on earth? Hmm. Do you know why heaven is a place of order? Do you know why there is no lack in heaven? Do you know why sin is judged immediately in heaven? That you can import those mysteries and make it happen within your domain. That's what it means, thy kingdom come. A replica, a replication of heaven's culture, heaven's atmosphere. It says when you pray, pray thus, thy kingdom come in earth, not on earth, in earth. The first earth being you, the earthen vessel. Let his kingdom, let his laws find expression so that your life becomes an expression of heaven on earth. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me your presence is heaven to me this is the reason why you must make up your mind from this conference that I will be in definite pursuit of knowledge do not let a day pass without you listening to a quality message that builds your spirit there should be a book you are reading scripture you are learning are we together don't allow a day pass and then you freelance knowledge pursue knowledge pursue knowledge pursue knowledge the mysteries of the kingdom favor is not working in my life i have to learn the dynamics you get the message this grace called favor don't say i was there when it was preached has it has favor worked in your life if your answer is no get back and listen again and listen again and listen again i'm tired of being oppressed by demons go and get the message complete deliverance part one two three learn the dynamics for wholesome victory not temporal victory that you laugh today and cry tomorrow again. Epileptic victory. You can command dominion once and for all. Are we together? My finances, things are not working well. Get, go and get the teaching I shall not want. Stay there. Understand God's principles. Understand the economic system of the kingdom. And know how to engage and rise out of shame and misery. Hallelujah. Yes. You're being troubled on every side. Your body wants sickness after the other. You are going to be healed. But you want your healing to remain? You have to go and learn scripture. Go and learn scripture. Go and learn scripture. Go and learn scripture. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Are we together? Your life is not working. Everything is confused. Go and get the message, the spirit of wisdom. You need to know how to derive profit from scripture. Doth not wisdom cry. Everything is built by wisdom. If your organization is crashing, you need wisdom. Not just information. Knowledge alone does not build. It is wisdom that builds. 
Are we together? You've lost a lot of things, opportunities and relationships. Go and get the message on restoration. Know how restoration happens. Our last master for it was borrowed and he said, where fell it? And the axe head floated again. Anything lost can be recovered under a certain condition. Is someone learning? Damage ignorance from your life. I'm challenging you, Canada. Damage ignorance from your life. Stop giving flimsy excuses. If it's not working, the bridge between you and result is knowledge, wisdom. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. There's got to be a way out. I don't seem to be growing and rising in influence. I need that kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty. There are principles of influence that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Influence has laws. Do you know the laws? How about longevity? I know I won't die. Don't take that kind of risk with your life. Not in this wicked, bedeviled world. What is the basis of your confidence that you will live long? Not necessarily out of fear. Do you know the laws that govern longevity? Or are you hoping you will live per day? No. The fear of death can go. There is a way that light can come that grants you the confidence. And you, you, you believe me, the person talking to you, you don't know how many times death has come around my corridor. But thanks be to God, which causes us always, always, always to triumph. There's been times that sometimes I'm about to take a trip and great friends, prophetic, and sometimes they call me and say, Apostle, are you about to travel? I say, exactly so. I say, please don't travel. We've seen a ghastly motor accident or we've seen this and I appreciate them. I know they are not lying, but what then is the excellency of dominion? The ability to know what Satan wants to do and change it is where authority comes. You think Satan wanted me to arrive here? Ask him. Unfortunately, he's used to pain from me and it won't end. Knowledge puts you in a place, it sounds like arrogance, but is the intoxicating effect of knowledge. Knowledge that works. I found your word and I ate it. It became a joy and a rejoicing unto me that the word became sweet like honey. Are we learning? Let's finish up. Number five. Canada, are you learning? Yeah. Number five. The fifth fundamental truth you must know if you want to rise to a point of power, grace, stature, and maturity, is that you must understand man hmm, as God's highest creation. You must study this mysterious entity called man. Don't know God alone. You must know the man, the midwife, the one who midwives everything. The arrival of anything on earth is man dependent we say it back home all blessings come from God through men to men all troubles come from Satan through men to men doesn't matter where it starts from it must meet a man to happen if you know God and you do not know men surprisingly prophecy will hang over your head but never find expression God is in this place but he's moving through men. Did you hear me? God is in this place, but the speakings of God is through frail lips of clay. He's chosen to walk with men. He can do without us, but he's chosen to walk with men. Most believers do not understand the value nor the ministry of men. Let me show you a scripture. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man at Bethesda. That man had been there for 38 years. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and Jesus comes to him and says would you be made whole and he listen to his answer the important man answered him and said sir I have no man I know where the solution is but I have no man it is a dangerous thing to have no man even for kings it is in the multitude of men that their honor lies you need to pray for the gift of men strategic helpers can show up in your life your ministry you are as powerful as the men that have chosen to support you you are as powerful as the men that have chosen to build a garrison of support around you and I'm praying for someone maybe a preacher maybe a business person maybe a parent in the name of Jesus you will never lack helpers in the name of Jesus you will never lack men I declare that men show up some of you before evening before evening before the session in the evening God will raise a man a destiny helper a bridge between your yesterday and your tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah look at me David is in the wilderness Canada God had spoken that David would be the next king He's rejected Saul. But David's destiny is being delayed. You know why? Because a man called Samuel refused to go and anoint him. And you would think God would bypass Samuel and go to David. He comes to Samuel and says, How long shall you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul as king, carry this horn and go to the house of Jesse. In other words, David would be having visions. On Tuesday, your breakthrough will come. And nothing happens God had already spoken but the man who would make it happen do you know men can prolong prophecy Joseph is in the prison and he pleads with the wine presser he says please when you go to Pharaoh tell Pharaoh I'm innocent maybe he will hear you but the Bible says the man forgot. Ah, your helper forgot. This is why the Bible says there is something called the book of remembrance. Can I speak that over someone? So Mordecai saved the life of Ahasuerus and it was documented. But he was not rewarded. He remained at the gate. And the Bible says that night could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and when they opened it he saw where Mordecai saved his life and he said who is at the chamber there and Haman came he said what should be done to this man Haman thought it was him and he gave the best description and he said without fail do that for Mordecai let me prophesy to someone someone you help who had forgotten you someone you prayed over you agreed with before they are rising in the name of Jesus, may the book of remembrance be open, be open, be open over your ministry, be open over your family, be open over your destiny. In the name of Jesus, when Pharaoh had his dream, the wine presser said, Ah. I remember my wrong this day that means it is wrong to forget those who helped you I remember my wrong it was an offense to destiny I remember my wrong and he told Pharaoh there was such a man and he said go immediately and the Bible says listen not God the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon who sent for him the king don't downplay men and don't say men do not matter you will suffer as if God does not exist the economy of the kingdom works this way everything comes from God but it is made manifest through the ministry of men the ministry of men hmm. the ministry of men the ministry of men your finances the ministry of men the building the ministry of men everything that you need men dependent if you know this you will know how to pray 
I wish I had time. My time is up. But maybe write this, burn it in your mind. There are four kinds of men you need to rise. Number one, they are called divine connectors. They don't have the ability to help you, but they can take you to the person who can help you. When you see the slave girl show up in your life, don't reject her. You may remain a leper forever. The slave girl did not have the miracle power to help Naaman, but she could recommend, and that was how Naaman got healed. You will find divine connectors. The key to receiving them is humility and discernment because they will come in a form that you may not easily accept. Divine connectors. Number two, you need men of influence. Men of influence. Gatekeepers. You have heard me say, um, Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. The dream of the baker still left him in the prison. The dream of the wine presser still left him in the prison. But when he interpreted the king's dream, it matters whose dream you interpret. Don't tell me you have the ability to interpret dreams. Whose dream are you interpreting? If you are still interpreting the baker's dream, you will still be locked up in prison. So when God wants to help you, he will make the king have a dream. Because only the king can make you a prime minister. Number three, you need gifted men. Gifted men bring efficiency to your life and your destiny. If you're a leader here, I want you to pray that God would bring gifted men. One gifted person, one gifted person can equal 30 people in your life and organization. It's not enough to have men. You need gifted people. This conference, by the grace of God, has been ordained by God, but the efficiency has been through the ministry of gifted people. Workers, did I just describe you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Number four, the final group of men you need are called burden bearers. These are a unique set of people. They don't move you forward, but they stop you from going backward. They are the ones who carry the cross. You don't see them when you are rejoicing in the palace. You don't see them during your triumphant entry. You only see them on your way to Golgotha. But they are there praying for you. They love you beyond the glamour. They don't love the man of God. They love the man. They don't love the CEO. They love the man. They are the ones who will cry with you and say, don't worry. The company seems to be folding now and everyone has left, but I will be here. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man who invests so much in people and then does not have burden bearers. Because even if you are Jesus, a day will come you will carry the cross. And if you do not have a burden bearer at such times, history is full of people who spend their lives investing in others. But at their dark days, everyone left them. I'm praying for you. May God make you a burden bearer. Yeah. And then may God bring burden bearers to you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Write this down as we close. The final body of truth, the sixth, that you must know. In order to command dominion, you want to rise spiritually, you must know your adversary, the devil. Don't ignore men. And then don't ignore Satan too. We are never taught in scripture to ignore Satan. We are taught to command victory. The Bible calls him the thief, John 10.10. 10, and that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. He says, be sober, 8 and 9. Be vigilant because your adversary, not your friend, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Are we learning? Seeking whom he may devour. You must know who Satan is. And the Bible says to not be ignorant of his devices. You don't know him to produce fear. You know him so that you will see how defeated he has been on account of the victory of Christ. 
and then you understand the rules of engagement as far as manifesting that victory is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ can you imagine I've just given you the second key to growth and maturity everything that we've said is under submitting to the word is this a good menu <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord let me give you the third and fourth the third key to attaining maturity in the spirit in addition to your prayer life and the ministry of the word is corporate fellowship I have to say this because I have something else to teach just lend me two or three more minutes and we're done corporate fellowship the power of the house of God you will never become a matured believer if you ignore the mystery of corporate fellowship I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord are we together corporate fellowship is powerful then I give you number four the fourth and final key I will give you is service kingdom service you want to be a believer that grows into a state of maturity the ministry of prayer alongside with fasting and all the spiritual exercises that come with it number two the ministry of the word and I took time to show you certain foundational truths that you must press for number three corporate fellowship there is something about God that you will never experience in your secret place it is when believers are gathered together the Bible says there the Lord hath commanded the blessing even life forevermore and then number four service service will help you test your knowledge whether it works or not service will prune your appetite it puts you under authority service gives you room to be accredited and to be approved run away from leaders who have never served no every great leader starts as a faithful servant it is service that transits men to leadership if you do not know what it means to serve you can never know what it means to lead hallelujah the Bible says fervent in spirit serving the Lord rise up on your feet we have to pray hmm. lampstands you want to light that fire these are the ancient keys that turned ordinary men ordinary men submitted themselves to the ministry of prayer they submitted themselves to the Word of God they submitted themselves to corporate fellowship they had a community of like-minded believers that helped them to preserve their values and they served they served their way to greatness separate me Paul and Barnabas service the man you call Philip started from the welfare department before he became an evangelist are we together praise the name of the Lord we're going to pray and I'm going to request Pastor Nat to just blow again just blow softly over us and I want you to dream with God for one minute and see yourself rising as a lampstand, a candlestick, a witness over Canada in light of everything I've told you. See yourself as that believer committing yourself to prayer. See yourself as that believer giving yourself to the ministry of the word see yourself as that believer who will never ignore the gathering of believers don't say it does not matter it does see yourself as that believer who is willing to serve to serve your way to glory serve your way to grace serve your way to greatness there's a reason why we call this the sound of revival it says i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp 
for some of you whilst you are hearing the worship just blow in the next one minute expect the spirit of god to be speaking to you he will be showing you areas to adjust he will be planting within your spirit resolutions that you must make you should never leave this conference the way you came are you ready now yes sir whatever song comes to his spirit just softly pray in the spirit while you meditate see your new self in light of what jesus has done ah Elenda leko shalado sabresh. Oh, keep us burning, oh God. Era shalada balada da bara dosiada. La de barando su de balako sabresh dia. The man of God is rising. A strong believer is emerging. A prayerful believer is emerging. Let this bring an impartation of a renewed desire for the word of God. A renewed desire for fellowship with the spirit. A renewed desire to build a community of like-minded believers. That's why God brought us here. Someone whilst you are hearing this sound, you are receiving the grace, the grace for service the grace to serve not just to watch things happen to be part of the things that happen for someone there is a refilling of that oil you have lamp but there's no oil that's what made the virgin foolish they had lamp but they did not carry extra oil Hallelujah. 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 You see what is happening to your spirit, man? You may never realize the kind of transitions that have been happening in this conference. It's an immersion. Is the word baptizo you are being immersed into another kind of reality that after this conference you cannot go back to your former self again when you are updating a software they tell you be careful the implication is once you update it it cannot go back to the former version that's what is happening to you an upgrade in the spirit you will not find your former self again you will not find your prayerless self again your wordless self again all you will find is the passionate you, the vibrant you, the spiritual you, the hungry you, the thirsty you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Allow me to make an altar call right now. Hallelujah. We had a massive harvest of people yesterday. And I believe that... There are people who were sent by God to this place. Listen, believers, and listen, everyone. It matters that we bring souls to Jesus. Are we together? Yes. Books were opened, the Bible says, and another book was opened, and which was the book of life, that whose soul's name was not found in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire burning with sulfur. This is not to threaten you. What the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world of unbelievers, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Perhaps this is your first time connecting to the conference, or you were here yesterday, but not determined enough to make it right with Jesus. There's always room at the cross. I'm going to count one to five, and I just need one bold person one sincere person one honest person who is saying i'm not playing games again i love jesus god bless you i see you come 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 god bless you come stand right here 
God bless you. Wherever you are, I want you to join this beautiful sister. I count one to five. Be on your way. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Canada, come on. Come on, Canada. One. Someone's knocking at the door. Two. Someone's knocking. Jesus is knocking at that door. Can you come. Can you hear it? Three. Canada, are you celebrating a harvest? Come to Jesus. He's been knocking very low. He's been knocking for so long. Can you no matter how far you are, come to Jesus. He's ready Jesus to give you a new beginning. Come. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is at the door. Four, making the call. Young and old, come, 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 come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Keep coming. I just want to speak to those who are connected online. I want you to know that you are part of this meeting and you should be part of this altar call. There has to be someone watching from anywhere at all. Perhaps you are even watching a rebroadcast of this conference. This is your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. You've given things of lesser value a chance with your life. Why don't you trust him? Trust him to make you. Trust him to build you. For those of us who are here, can we give these blessed people a big round of applause? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I see people young and old. I see children. I see the elderly. I see young people. Only Jesus can do this. To God be the glory. I want to bless the Lord for your lives. Thank you for responding to this call. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Please look at me. It doesn't matter what you have done or not done. It doesn't matter how your life has been before now. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away. When people come to Jesus, he receives them. He purifies them and he makes vessels out of them. And this is what he's about to do with your life. And so I thank you for responding to this call. Please let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Now just see Jesus standing on this altar. Don't look at me. Forget about Joshua Selman. Just see yourself standing before your maker, your lover, the Savior. He's standing here and he's telling you, it doesn't matter what you have done, I still love you. With that consciousness, say this again. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. 
I receive Jesus into my heart. Be my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands and I pray for you. Father, thank you for these blessed people. I love them with all my heart and I thank you. You have drawn them to yourself. This is a new beginning. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, based on the authority of God's word, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I declare that you begin to enjoy the victorious life that is in Christ. I bless you from my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So just a little instruction. Please let me have your attention. I'm going to request that you move to my left. That should be your right from where you are standing. There are counselors who have been trained to have a word with you. They'll have prayer with you just to let you know that we love you. Communicate a few information and then you'll be back to your seat. Are you willing to do that for me? God bless you. So let's give them a big God bless you. I've got my mind made up and I let's keep clapping. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind keep clapping. Made up. Keep clapping. And I I want to see my Jesus. Born, 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 say, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born. Born, born, born again. Born, born again. Born, born again. By the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll be rounding up the service shortly. Just a few instructions for the evening. By the grace of God Almighty, the evening will be our final session for this Sound of Revival. Are you excited already? Amen. And um, we're going to take the time to pray. We're going to take the time to minister to the sick. We'll take the time to speak over the territory. It's going to be a very prophetic time here by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And one last time, I want you to invite everybody, everybody, everybody you find across Canada, call them, drag them, love them, buy, buy a hot meal and drag them here. Whatever you have to do, you just bring them to the presence of God and then... For those who are following online, make sure that um, you inform everybody around you to connect. It's going to be an amazing time. Sounds of worship will rise from this place. We're going to be praying over Canada, tearing down every wall. And um, remember, remember, let me say this, every one of us here represented, please come with your prayer request. How many of you believe in the God that answers prayer? Let me see your hands. Amen. So you write your prayer requests and the ushers will collate them. Please listen. The ushers will collate them and we'll be praying here. I'll be asking the servants of God here to join me. We're going to be speaking over the request and we'll be prophesying over Canada, just releasing the sound of revival. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to come expecting that... Um, God will give you an unforgettable encounter.
time is 5 p.m. on the dot. Uh, the doors open from 3.30. And then, of course, do well to connect on all our social media platforms. Please make sure you come early if you are bringing anyone. If you need any assistance, just go to the PR desk and they'll be glad to assist you or you can meet any of the ushers to direct you appropriately. Have you been blessed? May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Let me speak over someone who has the faith to believe that between now and 5 p.m., in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord give witness to this word. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. For someone, you will stand to testify here and the caption of your testimony will be good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. In the name of Jesus Christ. Good news. It can come as debt completely paid. You will think I'm joking. It can come as a long-awaited answer you've been waiting for that will come as an email even right while you are here for someone it will be someone you've not met who is already in the crowd for a long time God will order your path and it will open a door for you in the name of Jesus may the Lord give witness to the word for in Jesus name we pray together let's share the grace and then we'll rejoice afterwards the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forever amen God bless you so you catch your breath eat rest stretch a bit and then we're back for the final session God bless you please greet someone on your way out in Jesus name Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.